Howdy, Jacob here. Today we're looking at Canadian natural resources in the oil, gas, and consumable fuels industry. 74 billion market cap on 80 billion enterprise value. They acquire, explore, develop, produce, market, and sell crude oil, natural gas, and natural gas liquids. Looks like they've been around since 1973. And pretty large company, if you ask me. $80 billion, that's pretty immense. $30 billion in revenue. 18.5 billion in 2014. So pretty decent growth from 10 years ago. Looks like it did happen quite immensely the last uh, two of the last three years when it's down a little bit from two years ago. But margins are pretty good. It looks like we're seeing cost of goods sold being in almost entirely the expenses. There's very little sales general and admin and other expenses, which you can see by the operating margin being very equivalent to the gross margin. In the last three years, huge margins. 25 to 30% on the operating side is crazy, especially when your gross margin is 30 to 35%. They do pay a dividend, and it is a 4% yield. It looks to be not, not a huge amount of their last three years, but again, prior to the last three years, it would be a good amount of their earnings going towards paying a dividend. And the return on vested capital last three years, great. We'll just have to... This would be a business that you definitely have to understand to see if they can hold these 25 to 30% margins because I think that's going to make this a good investment or not. Their balance sheet has 600, almost a billion dollars or a little over a billion dollars in cash like products with 730 million in short term debt and 7.3 billion long term debt. However, their debt has gone down immensely the last couple of years. It's good to see that they're caring about that a little bit. But even $7 billion in relation to their free cash flow, it's actually nothing. Okay, so we're not terribly concerned with that, that debt figure. The use of cash is sherry purchases, the dividend pays a good amount, and then paying down debt. And so I like this production of free cash flow. I like that it's much more consistent than their earnings. And... I like that the dividend in relation to their last couple of years of free cash flow is, you know, it's, it's as low as 1.7 billion, as high as 10.5 billion, is probably less than 50% of their five year average free cash flow. So, really not terribly concerned by that. And again, if you buy back shares in excess of stock based compensation issuance or issuing of shares, if you pay the same amount, you can actually increase your dividend through the aggregate payment being the same. Because again, you're paying more per share, but there's less shares outstanding. And so it's it's fairly easy to increase your dividend if you also buy back shares with your capital allocation. But again, those use of capital allocation needs to be strategic. Dividends are one of those things where it's great if you're an investor, you get that free money, but in essence, it's, it's something else that the company could have done with it. If shares were selling at extremely cheap prices, it might have been more beneficial and likely would have been more beneficial to buy back shares at those prices. But if they, you know, they also could make acquisitions that are advantageous and make the company more efficient. They could reinvest back into themselves if they have possibility of getting 10 plus double digit rates of return. And so paying a dividend is fine. 50% of free cash flow, not terribly concerning, especially in relation to the debt that they have. Not too concerned about it but capital allocation needs to be strategic. And it looks like they're kind of just buying back shares, paying down debt, paying a dividend. It doesn't seem to be as strategic as what I would like, but that's most companies, if I'm being honest. So let's start making some assumptions here. I think for revenue growth, we're probably not going to be looking at immense growth. We'll likely grow a little bit more than inflation due to them having maybe spending 10% or so of capital allocation on acquisitions and reinvestment. Let's give them 4%. Let's give them a little bit less than market average due to the fact they do have a little bit of their enterprise value is a bit higher in the market cap. I think at the end of seven years, it'll probably be a wash. So this is really just assuming that growth is not going to be as immense and maybe their margins aren't going to be as impressive. And so with what I'm seeing, I think that we can give them, let's do a little bit of a range here, 18 to 22% for margins and share changes of, they, they buy back a good amount of shares. So $740 million is 1%, meaning that about 2.2, 2.3 billion, but it's about 
inclusive of stock-based compensation. 2.8 is kind of a lot. So 2% would be about 1.5, 2 billion. I think 2 billion seems pretty reasonable to me. Because again, we're assuming roughly 10% or so to acquisitions and reinvestment, maybe 10% to debt reduction, 30%, 40% to share repurchases, and then 40 to 50% on that dividend. The dividend, they've increased it a bit in the past, but I think I'm fine increasing it just 1% to say that they can increase their dividend, but I don't really like anything to be in excess of 50% payout on the dividend side, especially when you you know that dividends are not really something that a lot of companies just get rid of on a, on a whim because that really shows unintelligent investors that they're going through a hard time, which they very well might be. But if you're being advantageous with money, sometimes it's best to just have a one-time dividend. Either way, just, just my complaints a little bit about it, but not terribly far off, 37% drop before you get the return we're looking for here. I think it's an interesting business, one that... You know, it's clearly a big dog at $80 billion, and I, I don't think that they'll be going anywhere anytime soon. I think they're in an industry that's not super fast growing, but based on their balance sheet and based on their free cash flow, I'm not really concerned about them going out anytime soon. I think it's going to be a short growth, but one that if they're really good with capital allocation, could be an absolutely fantastic investment. Hope you enjoy the video and have a great day. Thanks.